What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Deck Code. My name is Sam Sees Ghost, and I'm joined, as always, by my good friend and co-host, Axel K. Axel, how you doing, man? Dude, I'm doing super good. I'm so excited to talk to you about uh, this new patch and what we've been up to, because it's been a little while. Has been a minute. Uh, life for me has, it hasn't been anxious, anxiety inducing, but it's just been a lot. I've kind of been acclimating to it. So that's why I had to just take a step back for a second. Didn't quite mean to, but we're back now. So, but I'm super I, exciting. Yeah. I'm really excited to talk about Hearthstone right now. I've had a lot of good stuff happen to me this month within the game and outside the game, but we're here to talk about Hearthstone. So Axel, tell me what have you been up to? I've been seeing some juicy videos on my Twitter feed from you. Some, some choices that I disagree with, uh, not just as a deck to bring to ladder, but also like spiritually and emotionally, especially that poison, <laughs> that poison rogue specifically. Yeah, I think, okay, so what have I been up to? So I've been up to just a low ranked, like in legend pleb games, like nothing that you would ever uh, be able to, um, to kind of uh, understand, right? Because you're a, Pro gamer now, right? I'm not a pro gamer, but I will <laughs> I will definitely be a GM next month. So, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but no, but uh, so kind of, uh, yeah, Sam had a huge, uh, huge month, uh, but we're going to talk about that soon. So what, what I've been up to is like, I've basically played everything. Um, I, I actually tried to hit almost every, every deck before the patch. And I think I was kind of successful in doing that. I just didn't, I couldn't get uh, good footage for that Anaconda uh, Druid, but I'm sure I'm going to do something with that later. But on my free time, or I guess off cam, I've been playing a ton of Hunter. Yeah, and we, we, I've had we, a good time doing it. We had a really good discussion about Hunter uh, before the show. And we'll get into, I think the, the plan for today is going to be to kind of talk about what we've been seeing post patch because the patch came out uh, a week and a half ago and we're just going to kind of go down through all the class lists and just kind of talk about it and i'm really excited to again rehash hunter with you because you have some really good insight to hunter yeah thank you but what i want to hear about is uh -huh. your 1k gamer legend experience yeah so Tell me. yeah 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 so i entered legend this month I don't know. I think it was like a week and a half into the month, and I got in at 12K, which, I mean, I think that's higher than I usually enter, and we'll get into this a little bit more. I did get some, like, ladder anxiety, because I was like, oh, I don't play at this high a level often, and this late into the month. Um, yeah. So I was, I, I did not queue a lot of games at that, and Ridiculous Hat, uh, host of the Acquaintancy podcast and other podcasts, Kind of said, has he's done a few Twitter threads, which has been awesome. But he also kind of said, I think you should get used to playing in that rank bracket because even if you lose, it's not like you're no one has a gun to your head and they're going to tell you you have to play Hearthstone and win. It's you will learn something and you'll become a better player. Uh, yeah, admittedly, 100%. Admittedly, did not take that advice. I stopped playing for a bit just because life got busy <laughs> and I went away for a weekend. And when I got back and actually started sat down and playing Hearthstone, I ended up, I think I started around rank 3,000, maybe 2,800. And then yeah. I was going, oh, let's just mess around. We'll see what works. Uh, tried some Anaconda Druid, which I think is a fun deck. It is a little bit anxiety-inducing because there are some times when you just take the first four or five turns off and you're like, well, hope I don't die. Um, yeah. <laughs> but then... Uh, my THL captain, nice Jewish owl, and a great guy, had been playing a bunch of Libram Paladin. And I was like, you know what? I'll take it to ladder. I'll bring it to THL. And what happens every time I try to learn a deck, and I should know this by now, is I'll learn, I'll lose five or six games just in a row. And I'll be like, this deck sucks. Why are people playing this? <laughs> yeah, I can recognize that. Yeah. <laughs> so I fell down to 4,200 was my lowest. And then mm. the lot, I just saw the lines, like I saw the matrix, like I was Neo and it was just, I climbed from 4,200 to 2,000 pretty cleanly. Like it wasn't like, 
oh, I got to 3,000, then stopped. It was it was a pretty full steam ahead after the patch to 2K. Mm. Um, and then I did the same thing with Token Drew. It lost five games in a row, and I was like, this deck sucks, even though everyone says it's tier one. And then I blew right <laughs> past 1,500, and I was like, oh, damn, we're actually doing something here. And then just to end off the season... I played some Death Rattle Demon Hunter to 975, yeah. and I went 6-1, ah. and one, and I was like, okay, I know myself, and I need to stop and camp, because if I go on any kind of losing or win sh- losing streak, I will play until my head tilts off, and I'll, I just want to get the 11x at least once, Yeah. but if this happens next month, I'll still play. Like, if I get to 1,000 again next month i'll be like okay let's just keep playing let's get better at the game and let's just see what we can do and see where we stand but it it was great to like see triple digits in my legend score at the end of the month instead of at the beginning of the month when you get there on like day two yeah and you kind of you know the imposter syndrome kicks in and you're like i shouldn't be here yeah it wasn't even like really that i think i do think imposter syndrome is real and i have had that before like i think probably the first time i was like top 2k i was like i don't play this well like i can't be here and it was this time it was more of i have had times in my hearthstone career where i'll play too much and i'll go on a losing streak and i'll lose all the ranks and i'll get really tilted and i was like i just don't want to do that to myself like i don't want to just tilt my face off like that just doesn't sound like a good way to spend my hearthstone time yeah, but I, I get it 100%. But, uh, and the thing, it's kind of hard to keep yourself from not playing sometimes because you yeah. still, like, you know, you love the game and you want to play it. And the reason why you get so tilted is because, you know, you, you kind of love what you're doing and you just want to get better. And you want to yeah. sort of prove to yourself and everybody that, that you're good, right? Especially <laughs> when you spend so much time, you know, like talking about the game, doing content about it, like playing it. Being, you know. being annoying on Twitter, yeah, no, no, I do get it. I, I don't think <laughs> yeah, I get, yeah. I don't think I really get that imposter syndrome. I think I get like the reverse of that, where if I fall too far, I'm like, I am so much better than all these players. Why am I <laughs> queuing into these? And that's probably some like, not the right way to phrase it, but like, if I see like 8k on my rank, I'm like, why am I down this far? Like, I shouldn't. I've had those thoughts before, and I just don't like having those thoughts i don't like the, i don't like the tilts i don't like closing my computer and just being what do you even call it angry just frustrated you know yeah yeah but it's yeah yeah i i always like this is i guess this is some sort of weird like gambling mentality i guess but i can't end my day on a loss yeah there it's very hard for me to close the game if i don't win yeah so and if you win you're like <laughs> i can do another one when uh, I when I play too much, I will put my cursor right where the play button is, and before the screen even comes back in, I'll already press play. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the way to queue to begin with. But the thing is, I think I'm I'm a bit uh, I'm a bit different when it comes to uh, especially. Do you wanna do you wanna kick this off by talking about ladder anxiety? Yeah, I think that's a really good yeah. thing to start talking about. I know that it's kind of a topic on Twitter right now. But I think it is real. Like, I've had it before. I had it the beginning of this month. I had it when I was climbing. Um, Ladder anxiety is a real thing, and it comes from several things. Like Axel said, imposter syndrome. Like, oh, I, I just lucked my way to this rank. I don't really deserve to be here. Or, oh, shit, I'm on, like, a six win streak right now. What if I lose? Um, yeah. And the best... and. I have had times where I have ladder anxiety. Like when I was playing Death Row Demon Hunter from 1400 to 900 to 975, I'd play a game. I wouldn't close the yeah. app, but I would just leave my lap. I'd leave the game open and I just would walk away or go on YouTube for 30 minutes, then play another game and then repeat yeah. that process because I was just so anxious about queuing. And it wasn't, yeah. even, it wasn't even that I was like, oh, I don't belong here. It was just like, what if I get a bad matchup and lose? Like that was more of yeah. my anxiety. But it's like, do you, do you feel like you're like the nervous the that you get nervous because you yeah. really want to climb or that you don't want to go backwards? I, I think it's more of I don't want to go backwards. 
Yeah. Because it's like you said, Hearthstone is kind of a gambling game, and I don't mean opening packs. Like I really mean like when you win a game, it's fireworks, explosion, people cheering. When you lose, it's rain clouds. Aw, oh, it's yeah. It it's it, it the game knows to make you feel good and how to make you feel bad so you'll play again. Um, yeah. And it's kind of chasing that endorphin. Um, rush you know it's oh i want to get the win i want to see the number go up i don't want to see it go down um so i get really yeah, nervous to lose like i actually when i first downloaded deck tracker and i don't use it that much anyways i turned off game when it, after you win or lose a game if, i don't know if you use deck tracker we'll say I game did. one game recorded or game lost game recorded i had to turn that off because i didn't yeah, want I, to see that loss come up so yeah. I'm, I, I am much more of a person that's worried about going back more than forwards uh so like yeah i i'm a bit like that but i don't have any ladder anxiety at all in in hearthstone oh, wow. i i've had it in other games but i think like it, it's something for me so i think when i realized and i realized it kind of early that the amount of games that i will play with a deck is kind of not enough um for for the stats to really matter right so let's say I pick up Anaconda Druid and I play it for 40 games. Like those 40 games doesn't really matter yet before those 40 games turn into to like 100, 200, yeah. right? So I'm fine with losing 40 games in a row because I'm like, statistically, because I, I really trust my ability to play, right? Yeah. I'm like, statistically, I'm going to make up for this if I just play long enough. So... I don't really like I, I don't get anxiety about it right I don't get nervous when I queue I, I guess I guess like one thing I've learned to deal with letter anxiety is that it is just to kind of like you said trust your ability press yeah. pl press play with meaning like don't don't be like me and be like okay we'll just get the cursor there and tap the mouse so it goes <laughs> in what I've tried to do this month um and in the past, but this month I've been very successful of it, is make sure every game of, every session of Hearthstone has purpose. So it's not yeah. like I'm queuing in when I'm on YouTube or Netflix, just have it on the background, or just because I'm half awake, laying in bed, play a few games and I'll go to bed. Every game I've had this month, I've tried to have a purpose and be intentional with my play. Uh, I think that's that's super good. And actually, I think... Uh, it's it's kind of a good way to respect the game and re <laughs> like respect yeah. yourself a little bit, right? Yeah. Um, and yeah. I, I I don't like I said I don't get that imposter syndrome. Um, no. I get the reverse one where it's a, where it's narcissism. I get narcissism syndrome. <laughs> yeah. But uh, no. But, but I yeah. I like like you said I trust my abilities as a player. I I, I realize that I am probably anyone in Legend is an above average player at the game. Yeah, obvious. I think like I think you're amazing at the game if you're a legend. So uh, I don't think uh, like the average player really hits uh, legend that often, especially not if you hit it uh, consistently. Yeah. So, so I, yeah. I was gonna say like, and I I was gonna kind of like ask you like, so if someone came to you on Twitter or YouTube comments or we were just talking. Uh, what mm -hmm. would you say to someone who says, I have laddering, I'm really anxious about my rank right now. Like, I've seen people in your Discord. They've actually, one of them messaged me, actually. They were like, "Oh, so good. Um, I'm at Diamond 8. I want to get to Diamond 5 or Legend or wherever they were. I'm sorry, I don't remember. But they were like, "What did, could you coach me? What advice do you have? And I was like, I don't play Face Hunter a lot. That's what they were playing. Um, but yeah. if that person came to you and said, hey, I'm anxious. I want to get to Legend, but I'm like at Diamond 2.1. Not nervous. What would you tell them? Well, I guess first of all, I think I would tell them to obviously just play to get better. That yeah. like th that that's the best reason. Like fo focus on getting better, and it doesn't have to. So if you're invested enough to do something as big as getting legend in Hearthstone, like it's it's a pretty big feat. You shouldn't have to rush it, right? You don't have to be legend this month. You don't have to be it next month. If, as, as long as you know that you're gonna stick to it if you promise yourself like i'm gonna get legend then take your time i think that's super fine and 
uh, you're probably not gonna play enough games for your like win rate to actually matter, right? So I think that would be kind of my. Uh, I think that would be something that I would tell them. But it's also pretty much you know you just have to do it. You can't get to legend by just not queuing, right? Right. Yeah. You have to. You have to press the play button. You have to play against the decks, and you're gonna yeah, and have that's... bad matchups on the way there. It's yeah, gonna happen. It's... <laughs> Also, also, I can say this, and it's very, very important, and I don't know if we've touched on it before, but like, I lose a ton of games. It's like, I lose all the time. It feels like I'm losing more than I'm winning. So getting used to losing and kind of accepting that it's going to happen, like for real accepting, not just knowing it, but really accepting, like, I'm going to lose a ton. Yeah. Sometimes I will, sometimes I will just lose all day long yeah. i will like lose 20 win eight it's it's just uh, like that's how it goes and sometimes some days you're not as sharp as you are yep. other days and sometimes you just get really good momentum sometimes yeah. you just randomly forget things like something <laughs> that i really really have something that i struggle with a super weird thing is that in so in death rattle demon hunter there are two cards one of them is a three three rush um, that will, when it dies, it will spawn oh, yeah, two, the, two the, minions the with Yeah, 3-2, yeah. not 3-3. Three, no, no, three. no, 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 there's a 3-3. Oh, three, yeah, three oh, that... the, yeah, yeah, the performer, the performer, yeah, 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 sorry. Yes. Sorry. Yes, but but this ties into the Fell Rattler. I get them confused all the time. Like, I can hover over one of them, and I think it's a Rattler, so I just ra run it into something, it doesn't die, <laughs> and nothing explodes, <laughs> and I'm like... Why do I keep do, like why why do I do this? Axel, and it's one of them something... is a snake. It's a difference. Yeah, I know. One of them is a snake. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I don't know what's going on in my brain, but it's something that I will when when I'm just when I'm feeling kind of yeah. when I'm not at my best, this is a common mistake that I will do over and over again. And if I keep doing this in like a session where I play twenty games, I'm gonna lose a lot, right? right. Yes. So, so it's like sometimes you can try to, I guess, catch your weird, like th the weird things that you do because nobody else on ladder will make this mistake, right? It's just like, that's an Axel K thing. Like it's, it's just me. I'm the only one who does this. And it's kind of good to catch this, to catch like your weird own mistakes because nobody else will ever like, you can't look at somebody else's gameplay and they're going to do the same mistake, right? Yes. I think. Yeah, so they kind of. Yeah, I think when you learn it or you're learning a deck or just even playing you need to play with good ha with the habits that you want to have when you're climbing and have playing well yeah so like if we and go back to what i was saying sorry i didn't mean to cut you off there but no go on if i'm playing with netflix is my main thing i'm watching i have hearthstone in the background i'm not going to be successful climbing and if i have all my sessions like that that's going to be de yeah. developed as a habit that I make every time I play or most times, and that's going to make my climbing sessions worse. Yeah, 100%. So, yeah, I think, like, yeah, ladder, ladder anxiety is definitely a beast, and I think just a good thing to realize is basically that it's, it's harder than people make it out to be to become legend. I think it's really hard. Yeah, and I think one thing that I have that I did made a conscious effort to do after the first time or on my way to the first time to legend was not, and it's still like a work in progress, but it's to not tie my worth as a player to my rank. Yeah. You just cause you don't get legend does not mean that you aren't a good player. It does not mean that you don't deserve to be playing Hearthstone. You just didn't get to legend. If I didn't get 15k this, um, 15k 11x this month, doesn't mean I'm a bad player. It just means that I had an off month or whatever. My my worth as a player and person are not tied to how well I do on ladder, and that's when they are. That's when I tilt my face off and downward spiral and enjoy the yeah. game less. And I think that something that I I guess it's easier to notice when. Um, you you play as much as we do but yeah. some months are just harder than others because there are more good players on the ladder yeah like yeah and i it, 
I think this this might be touchy for for some people, but if if you are kind of if you're kind of like minded to me, right? I I don't want to be bad, but I don't mind other people being better than me. Right. So sometimes people were just better than me. Yeah. Right. But but that doesn't mean that I'm bad, right? No. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the the other guy was just better, and that's totally fine because yeah. whatever. Like he he's a completely different <laughs> person. Whatever what he does doesn't matter. So yeah, it's just and, some random guy who was better than me at Hearthstone. Yeah, yeah and, totally on, and on that day, like he or they, I guess they queued up your better. They queued up your your the deck that your bad matchup. They or they drew better than you in the mirror, or yeah. just on that day he was mentally prepared to play Hearthstone, and you were just a little you were playing the performers that the, the rattle the rattle the fell rattlers right yeah like that's ex exactly those happen like yeah. you're it's very very hard if not I would say impossible to play a perfect game of Hearthstone. Yeah, oh, I, I don't think I ever had. Except, except for yesterday when I, uh, I killed my own, uh, what's it called? Like my, my own anaconda. The the other the other minion that would pull out an anaconda. I killed that with the lunar eclipse. I've I got my anaconda and I won before. in one turn. I've done that before. I did that yeah. to a warrior who got me down to one health. They emoted me and I was thinking like, okay, how do I kill this, clear their board, and not <laughs> die? And then like the rope was burning. I got emoted. I was like, oh. <laughs> I got it, and then I did it, and then I survived that turn. Went off with the Chandra, and just they were not happy about that. <laughs> That's a good feeling. So I guess we could scrap everything that we said because we have both played perfect. We've just we're just ah. so good. The only reason we're not GMs right now is because we don't want to embarrass anybody else. <laughs> yeah, exactly, man. Uh, yeah, just watch my Anaconda. But yeah, so. But I think it's like, yeah, it's uh, it's it's a hard game. I guess that summarizes it, right? And it's gonna be hard. It, it, so I've played it consistently for um, exactly one year now, hitting legend every month, and it's still hard. Like the game is still yeah. hard. Um, I the, earlier this year, like that, that kind of comes back to your you are not your your worth is not your rank. Mm. I did not yeah. hit legend in May of this year because I was stressed out, didn't have time to play. And I was just like, it's just not going to happen. And yep. I just had Drago Cat and you were just like, hey, it's okay. You're still a good player. Yep. The game is still going to be there after this month. It's not like they're shutting down servers or if you don't get Legend, you can't ever enter the game again. And you're still just yep. a good guy and you're, you're, a good, you're good. You're fine. It's just you'll get it next month. And I did. And I came back. I felt rejuvenated. And it was good. Yeah, still a good player. Like, that, I, that's I was, like the perfect... I think that's yeah. the perfect example, right? Because I hit legend that that month, you didn't. You're 1k now, I'm 7k, right? Well, yeah, but that's because they, I just had uh, but, luck. That's all it was, just luck. Yeah, no, no, but still, like the skill was always there. Yeah, and I think that's one thing yeah. that players need to know too, is if you go, I may have had a lucky streak of favorable matchups on my way up there, one of the days or whatever, or I may have just played well. Next month, I still have the potential to get to 1K again. Just yep. like if you get Legend this month, but not next month, you still will have the potential to get to Legend every time. Yeah, um, 100%. Yeah, you're still, you, just because you take a month off for whatever reason, or you just don't get there, does not mean you lose your skill as a player. Yeah. 100% agree. But man... Do you have, do you have anything else you want to add to this topic? Because I think no, I think I'm good. Yeah, I think I think if we got to sum this up, I think we would just say ladder anxiety is real unless you're Axel, and then you're like, I'm just great. I don't get that. No, um. it, it's not. <laughs> it's not even that. Like, okay, so so this is kind of funny, right? So I play Hearthstone in a like since since I make videos about every deck, and I'm a slow learner. So, so just kind of something that's fun. So as I said before, I'm 7K today, right? Yeah. I was 12K two days ago. Ooh. Yeah. Because I, I was trying to learn a bunch of stuff at the same right. time. I was 12K and then I picked up something that I'm more comfortable with. And then I went yeah. to 7K. It's like still like even though I was a 12K, I was 
just the same person <laughs> as I am right now, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, I, I was just picking on you because earlier you said you didn't get a letter anxiety. I was like, you're just whatever. Axel's Axel's great. Oh. He's good looking. He's funny. He's all he's all the good things. <laughs> um, Except one K. Not yet. You'll. Be, I feel like if you sat down with like a deck that you just know and just played, you'd get there pretty quickly. Maybe like <laughs> I've been there on day two. So, um, so yeah, uh, ladder anxiety is real. Play the games and play them with purpose. Don't play them to hit a goal. Play them just to play the current game you're in. I've seen a lot of tweets from people I follow who may not have hit legend yet or don't do it often and they always say okay today's the day i'm hitting legend that is a good recipe to set yourself up for a really tilting session yep yep so just just play the game to play the best game you can if you win or you lose it's okay it's literally either a star or a number in the top right of the screen yeah that's all it is um but have and have fun doing it. Like if you're not having fun playing Hearthstone, take a break. It's okay. It'll it, it'll yeah. still be there. I promise. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Want to get into what we've been playing during the new patch? Yes. Okay. Before so. before we do, I do want to touch on the the nerfs. I don't really care about the buffs because except for Pirate Warrior, but I really want to talk yeah. about the nerfs beforehand. You go ahead. Okay, so the cards that were changed, nerfed. I say changed because Lucia was in there. Warlock got two nerfs. One to Rune Mithril Rod. It went from three mana to four mana. And a, and a nerf to the Demon Seed, which went from a six damage proc and a seven damage proc to two eight damage procs. As well as the eighth damage, the third one, which is also eight damage. So let's start there. Yeah. What do you think of those changes to Warlock? So it's uh so so i think i think it's it's nice to see you know the mithril rod kind of uh, so so Myth mithril rod is not something that i focus too much on when i play it's like when when they get the discount i'm not like oh. for some reason i'm not super like emotional about the mithril rod but, but but it was obviously like a power like it was too powerful so yeah. it's good that they nerfed it and i think um the quest line really nice uh that's a really good nerf i think so uh before nerf it was for the first quest it was damage yourself with six right yeah that was su it was you could tap on two tap on three tour guide and then tour guide and then tap on four for free and complete the first part of the quest yeah and i i thought about it i i, I thought a lot about this first quest and it's kind of funny how so you take six and then you heal three and you deal three so this puts you at like you're equal to your opponent right you're both at 27 HP. Yeah, in, yeah, in theory, right? yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so crazy because now you have a bunch of like discounted flesh giants and and you have drawn cards yep. and I think it's just kind of um I think it was way too powerful to be at such an even ground with your opponent, but you still would have had all of those benefits. Yeah. Um the So I think they really hit that nerf on the head. I think that was like kind of the perfect the perfect way to do it the more i have thought about that i haven't played i've not played i think i may play against one warlock this whole this whole time i don't think i've played yeah. against more than one the more i think about it the more i think it makes sense when i first saw it i was like this sucks like i really i like handlock a lot it is a good fun deck to play and i was like this is just gonna kill the deck and it really doesn't it just makes tams and oh. come down a lot slower Probably to the point where you, Tamsin gets dropped in fatigue instead of right before or even earlier than that. Um, yeah. Rune Mithril Rod though, that card was a powerhouse. I saw that card yeah. when it was when it was announced. And I was like, that card sucks, and it did not. <laughs> I thought that card yeah. was going to be bad, and it was like the opposite of bad. That was a bonkers card. Yeah, it, it's kind of funny because I had the I had the. Th I said the same thing about the quest line, actually. Oh, so, yeah. I, yeah, I thought the quest line would be super bad. Here's what I thought about the quest line. Uh, and then we'll move yeah. on. Because I, I love Warlock. Like, if you look at my wins, I have, like, 1,400-plus wins with Warlock. Because for the first few years of Hearthstone, that's all I played. Mm, but, I um, when I first saw the quest, like, this is a good card. 
but all the other warlock cards are bad so this won't be good yeah. and it wasn't that wasn't yeah. just not true it, i want it we'll talk about this a bit more but i really think that deck building has been rewarded in hearthstone in this expansion yeah. i think that if you are a good deck builder within the meta the meta realms not if you're like an off meta deck builder but if you can build a deck that fits within the meta you're rewarded for that because we see tradable in demon hunter and then like the delete package in warlock have just been so rewarded in terms of um meta defining because they've been good yeah so, yeah, yeah of course but but what sorry no, no, no. It, it's a, it's a, it's good that they actually reward uh, deck building. It's cool. It's yeah. uh, something that I can't do. It's, can't uh, do. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, I admire like good deck builders a lot. So I think it's nice for them to shine a little bit. And we'll we'll talk a bit more about when when I about the demon hunters and the warlocks and what I think about why I think that later when we get to them. The next changes yep. were to shaman, and they were. The last part of the quest, Command the Elements, went from two overload cards to three. Yeah. And Perpetual Flame from one mana to two mana. Yeah. So I think I've played some quest shaman against a friend just pricing for THL. And that it's slower now. Like perpetual you cannot perpetual flame to control the board on one for one mana. You have to be aware of that with your overload and then three procs. It does get you to a 10 drop on charge call but it it's t takes a long time to get brucon down yeah and you don't always want that 10 drop to begin with it, it was actually nice to have kind of a uh, it, it, it was nice to, to have the option right yeah um like uh, isn't the um like rag isn't that a nine drop the, the black wing or whatever like oh yeah um, yeah, yeah escape black wing is a nine drop um yeah yeah, yeah. it's ooh, it's uh, one of the best but so, ten drop and ten drops can be pretty good though because you get the dark moon rabbit, you get scrapyard uh, colossus. No, I think ten drops are good right now, but the more ten drops that get added, the worse that card is gonna be. Yeah, they're gonna <laughs> they're gonna add weird ones probably. They're gonna add like just a vanilla ten mana ten ten, no tard text. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I but, think it's good. It slows Sham down a bit. Which and it yeah. makes it less oppressive to board base decks. Yeah, I think um, Shaman kind of had some, like like some some problems with with both Shaman and Warlock was that they were so good at taking the disadvantage and turning it into an advantage. Like yeah. you overload, and now not only do you get rewarded by playing a way too good cur uh, card on your turn, you also progress the quest. So there is no downside to this overload. Uh, same goes with uh, with Warlock. With Sulok, you'd, you'd do exactly the same thing. You'd take damage to play a way too good minion on your turn, and but that damage was just a benefit for you. You can't you can't really have it like that. There, there has to be like a, a bit of a price for power, right? For, yeah. for those decks. And <laughs> when there's no pro price, there's just gotta be power. <laughs> it's gonna be too strong. Yeah, it's it's. I've had this thought yeah. before. It's like risk and reward, right? We always want a sweet yeah. spot between the risk you're taking and the reward. But there have been yeah. times, Warlock especially, when it's the reward has been way higher than the than the risk. Uh, cube block, yeah, like cube block comes to mind. Ugh, that was my first legend. Uh, not not playing it, playing against it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I think slowing Shaman down was good, making it less, generating less perpetual flames against aggro based decks is good. Yeah. I I one hundred percent agree. Like that perpetual flame, it was it was too much. Yeah, one mana was a yeah. was a bit too good. <laughs> yeah, and getting it from like a wand maker, oh, please. Wand maker, do you think they change? They don't change that card back after wand maker rotates, do they? Nah, darn. Nah, nah. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they do. Uh, and we yeah. have two more nerfs. We'll talk about them pretty quick, and then we'll get into what we've been playing. Uh, yep. they were Ironbound Brute in Demon Hunter. Uh, yeah. Seven mana, six seven. When you draw a card, reduces cards cost by one for each card you draw this turn. Went from seven to eight, and Alucia just got 
nuked. She's dead. Like, you can't play this card yeah. anymore. Uh, it went from swap hands and decks of your opponent until the start of your next turn to gain a copy of your opponent's hand. This turn or till the start of your next turn? I don't know because I deleted the card after that nerf came out. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I, I think, like, okay. So, I think the good thing with nerfing these cards the way they did was that they are both very unfun to play against. And I am, I, I was never really like team nerf Elusia. Uh, I didn't really care. So, but I, I kind of get why people don't like it. Same yeah. with the Brute. It's like, um, it's like, it, it's, the... it could come down too early. And it was yeah. just, it, it felt really bad to play against. Um, and it started getting pretty powerful, right? Yeah, so the Ironbound Brute, I think it was a fine card until it was could come down consistently as a 7-8 on 3, which mm. happened more times than it probably should have. Yeah. Um, but then it started being played also in uh, o the Lifesteal OTK Demon Hunter as another yeah. win condition, which was just, it was just too good at that point. Um, yeah. But I, I'm happy to nerf to Lucia. I really didn't mind her as a control tool to like counter combo, but as an aggro tool to skip your opponent's turn, yeah. did not like that. But you know, as an aggro player, that thing, I, that was the coolest thing ever when I realized, like, the, the idea yeah. behind running. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. When... I, I thought that was so cool. And, you know, th th it, you feel good when you play Lucia. Like, you feel like a skilled player. So that's <laughs> why I kind of like to play her in my, in my Shadow Freeze. Because I felt like a, I, I felt like a bad player when I play Shadow Freeze. I'm like, ah, I'm just hitting face. And then I do my, <laughs> my skill play. Like, I, I throw down this magician girl who's super cool right yeah and then it swaps the hands and animations are happening and i'm like <laughs> and then your opponent gets hit, in the, gets hit in the face for 25 i set that up by just dumping my hand <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't know i think but yeah so i i mm. i think they need to i do think they need to print a little more dis disruption within the in the next few in the next mini set and set but i don't think elusia is the level of disruption we want in hearthstone no, I think um, I just I'm just gonna say it and then we can leave it. Okay. I guess. So I think se coming up. No, it, it's it's not even. So <laughs> secrets are my favorite mechanic in the game, and I think focus on focusing on secrets is uh, focusing on secrets are really nice. I think it's it's a good way of disrupting and still having that little poker facey feeling in the game. So <laughs> I guess that's uh, kind of my disruption. Um, I think it's it's a good way of for them to do it. Yeah, I think I think, and I'll talk about this, and then we will move on, because yep. I think we're gonna we can talk about disruption in circles all day. But we want to talk about the meta, and it's been yep. almost forty minutes, <laughs> and we didn't do that. So yeah. <laughs> I I like disruption. I think disruption takes skill to use. Think about dirty rats. I feel like if Hecklebot was a little mm. bit more controlled it would have also seen more play but it pulling a card from your opponent's deck is just too power could be too powerful yeah uh, not for you for your opponent specifically uh, but yeah. alucia when it was used as a control card yeah it actually took quite a bit of skill because you gotta be like okay is now the time that i drop this is is their hand good to dump is my hand too good to give them etc but mm. when you skip your opponent's turn it's just no yeah yeah i i mm. i agree those are my thoughts and i know that gms are shouting from the rooftops now because it's gone <laughs> but i liked it as a control card did not like it as a uh aggro card no makes sense right yeah i mean skipping your opponent's turn is it's it's a fun <laughs> for me not for the um yeah mentality <laughs> yeah Okay, so our original plan here was to kind of just talk about just decks we've been playing, but I feel like we kind of have a new meta. I feel like there's a yeah. lot of stuff going on and nothing's really settled. So instead, no. we're going to go down the class list. Uh, I have Vicious Syndicate up so we can kind of direct our um, conversation, but we're just going to go down the list, talk about what we've seen and what we've played. So yep. let's just go down the list and start with Demon Hunter. So, oh. I think Demon yep. Hunter is in a 
weird spot right now because you can't really you can't do brutes anymore. Brutes are too slow, unfortunately. I love the Lions Frenzy brute deck that was out. I actually brought that to THL and won with it. But uh, yep. Death Rattle Demon Hunter Man is a yep. good deck. That deck is it, so good right now. Yes, it's actually my favorite deck right now. It's we have to appreciate that one expansion ago before the mini set which was three months ago death yes. Rattle demon hunter was unplayable yeah and now yes. it's the one of the best decks in the format yeah i really love um, my favorite card in death rattle demon hunter is uh, felt steel executioner and it was a card that i didn't use to run before but why that's like one of the best cards in the deck <laughs> Uh, because like before, I I played a like way more kind of board boardish deck, so okay. I I didn't really run it. I think before, I don't really remember, but I think it was either either you ran like the Rattlers or something, or yep. you ran uh, Executioner, something like that. Okay. And I all I always uh, preferred the Rattler, but then I found the combo, which is the Fell Screamer into. Yes. The corrupt into Ildari Inquisitor, right? Yes, it's that. Like it, it's so insanely good. Like you, you drop the screamer on four. Yeah. You play the weapon on five. You hit him. Then on six, you play an eight eight that will attack his face when you hit again. So that's how much is it? It's twelve. It's sixteen damage. Yeah. In two turns. Ugh. I love that. So I love that kind of stuff. I think you'll like this. I took. I took Death Rattle Demon Hunter to my THL match last week, and yeah. it was the mirror. Um, yeah. I scald after playing both of my Fell Screamers. So I had a one mana and a three mana um, Inquisitor. Yeah. So <laughs> the, that next turn I played for nine mana, two Inquisitors, and had my Fell Steel Executioner equipped. So such a good feeling oh, it was amazing they conceded obviously <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. Amazing. It's 20 damage yeah but um, yeah death rattle demon hunter is t it's a ton of fun i i really <laughs> like it and i'm planning on taking it to ladder tomorrow yeah it's just relentless like it's just a lot of stats that just don't go away unless you whiff on the draw yeah but the big weakness, of course, was Perpetual Flame. Oh my goodness. It's just going to keep out, keep <laughs> ripping out things of your hand and then out of your <laughs> deck. And then you just, you're left with nothing for one mana before that. <laughs> I had, before the nerfs, I had a board that was like two of the Death Rattle cards. And my hand was just Death Rattles. And it went, in Perpetual Flame, my hand fell out of my, my, all the cards fell out of my hand. Two cards left my deck and I just was, couldn't do anything. Yeah. It was just, oh. But uh, I have yeah, I think. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think Death Rattle Demon Hunter. It's uh, it's a very good, uh, very good. Uh, uh, I guess I, I, the way I look at like beginners, uh, beginner decks are decks that can do really powerful things. Yeah. Uh, without you putting too much effort into it, uh, but they're also kind of like uh, the skill ceiling is high enough for it to be practiced for for a long time. So I think this is one of the really good beginner decks right now. So you can you you're gonna, going to learn how to set up for a skull, like move cards. Yep. You're gonna learn how to trade your new tradable card before you play um, Blackthorn, so you don't get two of them. And it's not gonna rip out the other one when they die. And when they die. So there are a bunch of like tiny things that you can do to really make, to, to, to really play it super cleanly, right? Yes. Um, I, haven't, I haven't seen any fell demon hunters at all. Have you? No, I, I played it, I liked it, but I didn't continue playing it. It I'm, just didn't work out too much for me. I'm bringing it to my THL match because my opponent is very aggressive in their lineup, but I haven't seen any of this on ladder. Mm. You, are you running Illigonoth now? Yes, um, I like him. It's, yeah, just, I, I, it's oftentimes just, you can play him on six in this deck, and it's just, okay, kill this four, eight, or I'm gonna start dealing damage to your face. Yeah, but I think it's uh, I I get so lost in trying to set up that OTK, so I guess this is just kind of a I guess a kind of a skill thing for me. You, you don't need but to I, set up the OTK with this deck though. 
You just no, use, you don't. You just use it to deal like <laughs> six to eighteen damage, and that's enough. Yeah, I know, but you know, I'm, I just I hold on to my spell power minions too much. Um, oh, no, use that to I, clear the board and heal. Yeah, Jace. Is Jace. The OTK is Jace in that deck. Just yeah, I Jace. I know. <laughs> I just get blinded. <laughs> so, yeah, so so I think it's uh, it's a pretty so I'm I'm generally kind of bad. Um, at playing decks with multiple um, like win conditions, so yeah. I think this uh, this was just really really challenging for me. Moving on, yeah, I, I like the deck, but let's move on to Druid. Yeah, hoo hoo. So people uh, have said that the best deck in the format right now is Taunt Druid. Yeah. Do you agree or disagree? Uh, yeah, I think it's it's um, it definitely feels like worse to play against than it feels good to play it i think it feels like your opponent yep. is always high rolling yep but and uh, it, it's one of those decks that when you're on the other side when you play it yourself when you uh, lose the games you just feel like you can't do anything or when uh, the opponent like when it doesn't really go your way your way and your opponent kind of drops like a big taunt or a big board clear or whatever and you can't get back on board it it just feels like the deck is worthless. Yeah. So, but all around, it's the best deck in the game. It's so good when you pop off with it, you pop off. Yeah. When yeah, like if you don't, if you're playing this deck, well, looking for peasant, battle guard, yep. and oracle of a loon. Get yep. those cards, play them, win the game. But if you don't yep. get those cards, it just feels bad. Like it just. Okay, I guess I'll play a two mana two three with taunt. Hope it doesn't yeah. die so I can compost. So I can hope yeah, yeah. get to the cards. But Park Panther is a good card. I really like Park uh, Park Panther. I think was, it's great. It's a nutty card. So yeah. like it, the... I don't want to call it a high roll deck, because I don't think it is. But there are no. some turns where it really feels like you just get high rolled or high roll your opponent. Yeah, and uh, Park Panther, I think it's so good in an uh, aggressive deck. Actually, the first thing that I thought when I saw Park Panther was like, if this was a Hunter card, this would be the best card in the game. That's why it's not a Hunter card, because it'd be too good. Yeah, that, that's it. I was like, but just fitting it into an aggressive deck is like almost as powerful, right? So yes. uh, I think it's, it's super strong and you shouldn't sleep on it. I know some lists are not running it. The first list that I tried... Uh, I didn't run uh, Park Panther. But... I was I was watching uh, my buddy Cyan Sheepies play Taunt Druid, and he ran into a mirror, and they were yeah. running Kazakis, and I was like, well, your opponent mm. just made their deck 25 times worse, because yeah. Park Panther's just too good. Yeah, I will 100% say, agree. Yep. I will say, if you're playing Death Rattle Demon into this deck, you are unfavored, yep. but I beat this deck on my way up to my climb and ace hunter cream is a monster in that deck oh, you, oh yeah, yeah, yeah so good all your death uh, rattles trade and then after the cream is cleared they kill off your death rattles and you just get more and they're just so behind on board yeah something that i've had like some, something an interesting thing that i've had uh, success with is uh, like you have to live with them having a watchtower up all game long right yeah. But something that I like doing against them is that if they play Greybo and they play the Watchtower, I will try my best to make it so that the Greybo lands on the Watchtower. Yes. Yes. And then can't attack. Yeah, then it's just gone. Yeah, I think that's that's kind of a nice play to do, but you, like if you can't kill that Watchtower, like if you can't kill it off then it's uh, it's it's never going away after yeah. that. So, because they're always gonna, they're always gonna fill up the board again. So you just have to live with that watchtower. But the further into the game it goes, the less impactful are those watchtowers. So, yep. I've yeah. had I've had games back in Barons where uh, Alex Straza was running around, so I had Alex Straza in my deck. They made it cost ten. And I was like, it doesn't matter. I'm still gonna play yep. this card because you're gonna get hit in the face for eight, and I'm gonna win the game. Yeah. Now but I think yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, keep going. Sorry. No, no, no. I was just going to move on to Anaconda. Oh, that's where I was going too. Great minds think alike. Yes. Um, I've seen this deck. I have I played this before the patch. I like this deck a lot. But like I said, it feels, especially against aggressive decks, it kind of feels like if you don't get online and all the ramp going, it's very hard to win. 
Yeah. So uh, yeah, yeah. I of course it's it's very like high rolly. It's not even high rolly. It's it you have out you have other ways to win the game because I think a lot of people, myself included, really focus in on celestial alignment and anaconda, which is your win yeah. condition. Like that, if you can do that, you're gonna win the game. But mm. you also have glowfly swarms. You have arbor ups. You can win the game that way too. Yeah, that's true. And you can also hit like the old combo that I actually learned from one of your older videos where you um, use uh, nature studies on turn three, then you yes. play your um, Glowfly on four, and then you um, Lightning Bloom and Solar Eclipse Arbor up on turn five and just win the game. It's so good. It's you can still do so it. so good. You can still do that. So I think, yeah. I think, um, I think Tauntruid's the better deck. And I think if you are yeah. a beginner, you should go for Tauntruid. But if you're more nuanced at the game and you want a bit of a harder deck, it's a good deck. It's not a bad deck, but yeah. it's it's a bit more nuanced. It's a bit you have a bit more uh, different paths to take. I did have a game against a Shadow Priest where mm -hmm. I was at I had a bit at five mana, and I was at a place where if I drew Innervate off the top, I win because I did, and I drew Innervate. Played it, played Bloom, played Chandra, yeah. Solar Flared, and Germinationed it, and then was able to survive from there. But it was crazy. Like, there's, some, yeah. there's a lot of different avenues you can take to win with Chandra, and it's not just um, Celestial Lineman. No, but you, um, but yeah, so, so basically, I, I can just kind of explain what the deck is about so, yeah, so yeah. what you want to do is you want to play this card it's anaconda she makes all of your nature spells cost um, two mana less right so there's a card called uh, germination yep. that it's a four cost card that will uh, th they will make a new copy of whatever you put it on and, and it it's going to give it taunt yep, it's a nature spell so it gets discounted also yeah so you just keep casting them on uh on your anaconda sure. and then everything will be free and then you drop your you can do it before also of course your celestial alignment which will put both players back at one mana and then you get to climb up again yep. uh, and on the on the way you can also like use uh, nourishes and and stuff to ramp up so you can so you kind of speed ahead of him uh one more time the, right yeah the ideal turn the ideal way you get there is you overgrowth on four into alignment so you get it on five or six or whatever. Yeah. And then you go Chandra. You play a whole bunch of draw cards like Fungal Fortunes, um, Nourish. You just ramp back up. You draw your cards. You Solar Flare. You Scenary Ward. You Arbor Up. And you just... It's stupid. <laughs> yeah. And it, it's not one of those decks where, where you're ahead or... or or anything like you will win on one turn it's a miracle deck yeah it, basically the, well yeah. the real miracle deck is celestial druid yeah i know but that the, that shouldn't be played <laughs> that is a, that is actually just a bad deck and if yeah. it wins it's because they just high roll like i don't think that is a good deck no i don't think so either so anaconda is, is it's kind of uh i i think it's kind of the real Miracle Druid. I think it, it's also just a like we were kind of talking about like it's a miracle or a high rolls, but it's a good deck. Like it is, a, it is yeah. a consistently. I think the reason it's not a miracle is because it's pretty consistent with how you can win because it's good. It's a, just a good deck. Uh, but Taunt yeah. is the way to go. Yeah. Now, uh, yeah, I think. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I was gonna say it's, uh, we, I'm so, we haven't done this for a little bit, so we're kind of I'm kind of talking <laughs> over you, so I'm sorry. No, go ahead, man. I was just gonna say it's time to get on to your favorite class now, which is yeah. Hunter. Yes. So yeah, it's uh, there is like a quest hunter that is has recently become good. But have you even tried it? Uh, I don't play hunter, so no. no. It's one K gamer. All right, we don't play hunter. Don't, <laughs> no. Okay, I don't hate aggro decks. I need to make that very clear. But hunter is just something I cannot wrap my head around. I tried face hunter. I was okay with highlander hunter when it was in standard, but. Face Hunter is just not a deck that understands. And I know there's going to be someone who's going to be like, just go face. I'm like, yeah, I get it. It just doesn't work for me. Yeah, I like, uh, of course, like with Face Hunter being my favorite deck kind of of all times. And, and you know, I, I think that there is a lot of skill <laughs> in Face Hunter. And there's a lot of like weird little things you need to understand to play it optimally. 
Uh, but yeah, uh, we can we can talk some about Face Hunter because uh, it's my most played deck this month, and uh, it was the deck I took to Legend, and uh, when I, it was before the patch, obviously, and I have sort of a controversial opinion uh -oh. on the match spread because uh, I think that the three biggest decks were Mage, Warlock, and Control Shaman, and I think that Hunter was favored against every single one of those decks even the control shaman uh and i think like so my stats it, it's not super big but out of the out of the uh, like 28 uh, out of the 28 no uh, yeah out of the 28 uh, shaman games i played i lost four against the control shaman and i think it's because the way i look at face hunter is that right now it's kind of more of a spell burst deck than it is a um, a minion based aggro deck you kind of want to play your minions uh, up to turn four but after turn four you basically only use your hero power every turn and then you use your spells and that's kind of the way that i have been beating like beefy control decks so what you're saying is it may not be favored but you have played the deck enough so you understand those little things and you're just a good player um maybe <laughs> but i, I think, maybe I, like I you, can, you can take it yeah you, you can take it that way but i think that if uh, uh i i think that if people so so the key to hunter is the hero power right. it does everything that you want to do so basically what you want to do with a face hunter is you want to deal damage face and this is exactly what uh, the the hero power does but <laughs> it also saves you a card it helps you curve out and since that's infinite damage across multiple turns, uh, you can use it to to kind of yeah just set up that uh, s set up kind of not early kills but I guess later game kills. No, I get, uh, I get if you mix it with all of your all of your damaging spells. So I think that if you value here um, hunter's hero power a lot, I think you're gonna notice that the deck is way better than you think. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. And I think something that, for me specifically, at least from my own perspective, is I don't value the hero power enough because the real way you should be playing a face hunter, in the, at least that's what I understand, is you play your damage, you play your minions, but you should always be using that hero power as often as you can because that's also that just deals extra damage, right? Yeah, I, 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 I really think so. What do you think about quest hunter, though? Uh, I don't know. It, like, <laughs> it, it, it feels like a meme whenever I'm up against it. Like, yep. I, I've lost to it hard, but it's I, it's it's a lot of like, what is this guy even doing? Yep. Like that feeling. Uh, so I don't really have any strong opinions on it. Uh, it looks like it's good now or like decent, but I just it's kinda, definitely not my style. Yeah, I just kind of feel like people don't. I feel like there's probably a good build of it, but I feel like people don't know how to build it because no. I see stuff like and trap sorceress and vish and venomous scorpion in the deck and i'm like that doesn't belong in your deck those don't deal no. damage what are you doing no <laughs> exactly but yeah um, i think uh it, it, it's hunter it's it's not a super super exciting but it's my favorite what about i see on the vicious syndicate report beast hunter have you played against this deck Yep, I have, and I've been steamrolled by it. And I was looking at the matchup spread, and I was like, "This looks pretty bad." It is. But yeah, I've been absolutely, absolutely steamrolled by it a couple of times. I have like, not lost a single game to this deck. Yeah, so so the idea is that you, um, I think the only beast you run is Wolpertinger, mm. and okay, so that's the one that I've been up against. Like oh, they yeah. they run Wolpertingers and then they buff it and they just keep drawing it and drawing it and drawing it and they buff it and they reshuffle it and uh, like they they're going to get a bunch of like 7/7s seven for one <laughs> mana in one turn and then you can't do anything about it. I don't it. think I've so, seen that version. That sounds I want to play that. That sounds fun. I I got I've like I think two or three times I've been absolutely like rolled by it. Yeah, I mean I've seen Wolpertingers buffed, but they've also had other beasts in the deck. I think they had a Rhino. I think they had uh Zixor maybe in the deck, but I've seen other beasts. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the deck is bad though. I'm looking at the matchup spread and it's just awful. It's all red except for two spots. <laughs> yeah. 
But let's talk about the most popular deck and probably not that good a deck. Uh, Quest Mage. Okay. Yeah, Quest Mage. So I saw a funny tweet from somebody once, and I don't remember who it was. I don't remember, but that if if you hear this, all credit to you in some way. But it was like Quest Quest Mage has like a guide in the deck how to play it what you're gonna do each turn and that's just follow the quest right yes it's it's one of the easiest deck in the game to play right because you you already have kind of your guide there you just have to hover over the quest and you see what you're gonna do this this i don't like talking about ladder like this in this cotton like for standard play but it really just feels like a tournament conquest deck you bring this to target specific decks and you hope you don't see other stuff because you'll lose. And that's but how yeah, this I, feels on ladder. Because you lose to a lot of stuff on ladder. Yeah, but it, it's it's also so I, I struggle against uh, Quest Mage. I think it's it's definitely it's it's hard. I, I don't like those freezes too much. I mean is like I don't I don't think that they should remove it or anything, but <laughs> like I don't like to play against those freezes, right? Yeah, I mean freezes can be annoying. Um and I mean, when I was calling with Libram Paladin, it's su- that is such a hard matchup that yeah. Libram into Quest Mage. I've won it. It's not fun to play though. Um, no, because they just like you said, they freeze your stuff. But I do think that the the deck is just it's it's fine. In I just I'm ready for Mage to do something else. Yeah, this is, I it's I kind of boring at this point. It's just yeah, we've seen it before. Yeah, so like the only like the only complaint I have about Quest Mage is just pity complaints right yeah it's just so, something that i just don't like about it is how long the opponents it's not that the opponent's turns are too long it's when your turn is super short and yeah, they're yeah, yeah. like and two they're turns draw, and they're drawing all their cards yeah i do not it's just it's just not fun to sit through yeah so like so so yeah. i had this when i was playing i don't remember which uh which deck i was playing but it ran man creek and i was like he he just he roped and he it, it, it wasn't like malicious or anything he just he just did his big ass turn right <laughs> he <laughs> he drew everything that he needed to do and then like on my turn it was turn three i was like man creek <laughs> and then <laughs> he did it all again <laughs> and i don't know that was just frustrating to sit through um i did bring this to thl because yeah. i was baited a bit because the deck was doing like really well the first day of the patch because it yeah. was optimized, and I did beat a, uh, I did beat a big warrior with it. My opponent did throw, but I still won the game. So, yeah, that is what matters. They they played the bulwark and then immediately play outriders axe on accident. <gasps> yes, I had that's one, almost. I had like one yeah. card in my hand, and I then I drew my draw and just popped off. It was amazing. I so good. That's <laughs> some like Baron stuff, right? They. Uh, they uh, equip their uh, bulwark and then you kill their crush and they get that useless weapon. Uh, but there is a new mage. I was wrong. I, well, there's other things we can do. Wildfire mage. mage, which isn't good. Yeah. It's a bad deck. <laughs> yeah, I had a ton of success with like a freeze ping mage in the, in the end of Fortune of Barons. So I was actually, I, I thought that this might like that this could maybe be powerful but it doesn't look we, so strong. we don't need to talk too much about it but i think the main issue really is it doesn't have minions that it wants to run besides the of uh, the one that deals damage based on your hero power and it doesn't have card draw that it wants to run that's efficient like you can run arcane Light, yeah. but that's like that's it yeah yeah like if they had a card like cram session but it was like draw a card for each damage your for each damage your hero power can do that'd be better but if it doesn't have that yeah all right so now it's on to the best class in the game bar none paladin yes i Um, mean it's it's super good it's all variations except quest (laughs) wait you made a video on it though yeah it's uh it's a ton of fun and it's almost there so i had a pretty good win rate with the quest paladin but it still was like 20 games or something so it's not really it, it doesn't really matter but it's it's a, a ton of fun and it's i think that if it's it's not really there yet but it could definitely become viable yeah um it needs a bit more stuff i mean it needs card draw like i think a lot of these decks that are almost there need card draw and they're much better 
Yeah, but but I think uh, actually like it's since it's a hero power deck, uh, that card draw isn't super important because you're gonna complete your quest super quickly and you're gonna start wanna click just click that button. Yeah, so... but if I have six mana and I click the button, I have four mana and I want to draw cards with those for the four mana. Uh, I guess. I mean, you, you're always gonna curve out with your one drops, and I, I never, I never felt like I ran out of cards actually. Okay, that's fair. Yeah. But let's talk about a real deck instead of yes, bad zoo. <laughs> uh, yeah. Libram Paladin is like yes. probably the best deck in the game right now, and it loses to Mage, but that's really yeah. it. Like, it might Shaman too. It loses to Quest Shaman, but again, yeah, we just. Making 8 eights with Divine Shield and Taunt that also heal you for 4 mana is pretty good. Yeah. It's uh, it's it's kind of old. Like, it's almost the same list as we used to see. But we have some new cards, it's, right? It's a little more controlly. You run City Tax. You run... Um, what's the... Blade Master Samoru. You, mm. can, you have a lot of ways to, like, clear the board and then play your stuff. So there's a lot of turns where I play Leave Them Wisdom, City Tax, clear the board, heal, and then play a taunt. Or I bear off Broom, clear board, or I bear off Samoru, clear board. There's a lot of like little board clears that you can make to stop your opponent's momentum and then generate your own, which is yeah. really good. And you also get to run Bannerman, who buffs yes. your hand. Yeah, so good. But also, like, yeah, this is a more controlly version than the ones we are used to. So most people by now are probably more used to, like, the secret Libram yeah. Paladin of the Barons. And I, I was really good with that deck. I'm pretty bad with just <laughs> normal Libram Paladin. I don't know. It's uh, But, but yeah, it's probably because it's so controlly, right? Barrows and... I have taken a Taunt Druid to Fatigue as a Libram Paladin before. I made them get to <laughs> Fatigue because I was like, I'm going to win this game and you're not going to touch me anymore. So yeah. it was board clear, heal board clear, Liazrin board. It was it was it's so good. Like it's good. It's not like yeah. it's a really good deck. But you have to be able to not. You have to be able to think through those turns a bit to say, okay, what's the most optimal way in defending myself while stopping them? It is it is the epitome of play for tempo while stopping your opponent's tempo. Yeah. Um, but there's also Secret and Hand Buff Paladin. Those decks have been around for a while, but they're still very good according to this spread. They're all green. Yeah, so... I think if you pick up a Paladin that isn't Quest Paladin, you're going to be pretty good. Yeah, I think so too. And it's, uh, you know, I, I feel like, yeah, it's it's very, like, the decks are, are very different, but they kind of run the same cards, which is interesting, like very similar cards at least. So I think if you are on a budget, I think like just investing in Paladin cards are really good. If you asked me before the patch if I liked playing Paladin, I would say Paladin is my least favorite class to play and to play against. It's your least favorite to play against? Because I don't like the play pattern of I'm just going to play the biggest mini in my hand and hope it sticks. Uh I, I kind of see that, but it, it's also, I think that's kind of uh, the, I think that's, so when you play against a Paladin, it's kind of fun when you realize that if you just manage to clear, you can kind of, yeah. uh, you're going to win the game. Even if you're an aggro, aggro deck. So let's say you're a face hunter, you still kind of want to, you, you want to change up your game plan a little and you want to start clearing because he's not have, getting uh, on the board. And hope they don't Summer. have Paladin of Hope. Yeah, yeah, and uh, <laughs> of course, like, of course, Samuro as well. Like, yep. he, he is the big comeback, right? In and Paladin, you generally. can buff Samuro pretty efficiently in this deck with Bannerman and zero mana Libram of Wisdoms. Or, yeah. Yeah, that's what they are, Wisdoms. So he clears board yeah. even without them being at one man, one health. Yeah. But uh, have you seen any priests? If after the patch? Yeah. I think zero. I've I think seen zero. one quest priest, I think. Oh yeah, sometimes I go up against a quest priest. Oh my god. I've never lost to one and I'm so scared to to lose to it because I don't <laughs> want to be the first one to die to the quest. I don't think anybody has died to it yet and I just I'm not going to be the first <laughs> one and if I'm recording and somebody hits me with the quest, I kind of need to upload it, right? I kind I I got to take that for the team. Or your YouTube channel. That's what happens. <laughs> yeah. So so I think I have to take one for the team because I think that everybody's like 
nervous when they play against <laughs> uh, quest priest. I, I have seen one and I killed them on turn six. So yeah. And shadow priest, the vicious anger report says it is playable, but I just haven't seen any. I don't. I think without a Lucia, it's a lot worse. But I will say I do hope that shadow priest sticks around for the next year and a half, or they find a way to put it in the core set. Because I really do like the deck. I like the play style. I'm just not very happy with the skip your opponent's turn, win the game card. Yeah. So, uh, I 100% agree. Okay. Excellent. We have four classes left. Think we can get through this? Uh, we do it. What, one deck a class, right? Yeah, let's do the, be the most popular per class. And if there's something weird we've seen, we'll talk about that. Yeah. Rogue, talk to me. Poison Rogue. Uh, <laughs> Poison Rogue, you know, that's my favorite. It's not, I don't think it's super played right now. I still think it's kind of good if you're up against a ton of mages, but I think that um, Taunt, Dru Taunt Druid and uh, the new Control Warrior is just going to put an end to this deck, and I don't think we're going to see it. Anything that plays more than one minion is this deck, yeah. is Poison Rogue's Nightmare. Like, yeah. Um, but it's really good in the mage. It's 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 another deck that's like a conquest. We're good for the tournament. They're targeting this deck. Let's play that. Yeah, and I think uh, yeah. Quest Rogue is rising in popularity. I think we might talk about. I think we should make a full episode on Quest uh, Rogue later. I I do too. I think with Paladins and Warriors becoming popular because that deck beats yeah. them pretty well. Uh, yeah. Contact Rogue just. I think it's a it's a high legend deck. It's not a deck for people trying to climb the legend. Um, yeah, I haven't even tried it. I, I don't want to. I don't. I also just don't like the play style of play a bunch of cards, draw, and then hope you don't mess up. <laughs> yeah, but I think that's it for rogues. <laughs> what else do we have? We got shaman, warlock, and warrior. So let's get shaman, and warlock. Yeah, we two... have already gone over shaman and warlock, kind of. Kind right? of. Yeah, we did. We talked about the nerfs. <laughs> Quest shaman slow. Elemental yeah. Shaman has a pretty good matchup spread, though, but yeah. um, I just think it's kind of boring. It's like the Death Rout Demon Hunter. It's boring. We've seen it before. People just aren't going to play it. But I think if you want to go to Legend, this deck is pretty good for it. Yeah, I think, but I think this will get kind of overshadowed a little bit by Death Rattle Demon Hunter. But, if people uh, play it, right? Like, yeah. if all, they don't, be, Rush Warrior is probably still a good deck, but there's just no data on it because people don't want to play it. Yeah. Uh, we talk about Handlock, it's slower, but you still win the game with uh, Flesh Giant, Wind Fury. You still get there. Like, you just don't win with Kamzin as often or it, it, unless the game goes super, super long, which is good. You shouldn't win the game with Tamsin. I think if you're winning the game with Tamsin consistently, it's very much a sign that something's wrong in the meta. Yeah. And then Warrior. New class in Hearthstone, Axel. Yeah, it's, it's out. totally. They released a new class. But yeah, um, questline got uh, questline got buffed. I played the aggro version, but I think that the new control version of Quest Warrior is better. I think it's always going to depend on what you're seeing, right? Like if you're seeing token druids, face hunters, you're going to want to take the control version. But if you yeah. just want to get some games done quick, play some pirates, you want to play the aggro version. Um, yeah. Also. The five mana four five that became a four six that is a huge buff. Yeah, it's a huge buff. Oh my gosh! It does it, it always procs now. Like it, there's never a time it doesn't. Yeah. But there's also a big warrior. There's also a big warrior. Yeah, I have like zero experience. I, I'm this. bringing it to THL tonight, and I will message you tomorrow or um, later this weekend tell you how it went. But I when I play against the deck. And have played it as in a scrimmage. It's done pretty well. As long as you don't like draw all your big boys, I think it's pretty yeah. powerful. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I I really dislike armor, so. But you like playing I hope Paladin. It's not too good. Uh, Paladin, yeah, yeah, yeah. Paladin but... is just divine shields and taunts. It's like armor, but it's a minion. It's different. <laughs> <laughs> it's different, but no, the but same. Like, yeah, but like Rancor, that's my absolute nightmare. Rancor's a really good in the glow fest one, by the way. Uh, I, it happened to me yesterday. <laughs> but uh, we have been going for about an hour and 15 minutes. We are on different time yeah. zones. I think Axel's getting tired. So we're gonna, I gotta go to sleep. We're gonna <laughs> wrap it up so Axel can get his beauty sleep. 
But uh, thank, you. thank you for hanging out, Axel. We'll do this again, and we, if we do it on the weekends next time, we can uh, not do it at eleven o'clock at night your time. Yeah, I think it's better. <laughs> okay, um, but, but it was a ton of fun. This it was, was a ton, a ton of, fun. of fun. I'm happy we got back to it. Kind of went long with the classes, but I think it was just good to go over stuff. Um, but yeah, Axel, where can people find you? Yeah, so just search uh, Axel K Hearthstone on YouTube. That's my important uh, link right now. Uh, I make a ton of uh, Hearthstone ladder videos. I think that I make the best he makes Hearthstone some really co good content. content. He does, and a lot of his uh, subscribers have been hitting Legend for the, the first time, and it's awesome to see. It's true. It's true. So yeah, I think you should uh, check it out if you wanna if you wanna learn some. Yeah, I, I do too. He's a great resource. Great guy. Um, and my name is Sam Sees Ghosts. Mostly active on Twitter, though I'm trying to get the content machine back rolling. Uh, we'll see. But give me a follow on Twitter, and all the links for everything will be in the description. And guys, thanks for watching, um, and we will see you next time, whenever that is. Hopefully, in the next few weeks. Yeah. All right, man. All right. Take it easy, everybody. Peace.